Okay, good evening and welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting work session for October 18, 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First is first, approval of the agenda for tonight. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for October 4th, 2023, closed session. Got a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the minutes from the closed session of October 4th as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And approval of the minutes for October 4th, 2023, open session. I move to approve the minutes from the open session of October 4th as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, first uh, item tonight is synergistic energy savings update. Mr. Muir and Mr. Uh, Amadio. Good. So, President Schifanelli, um, Dr. Shell, board members, you had uh, asked for us to bring in um, synergistics to give you an update of uh, the progress that we were making. Uh, we, you approved this contract back in December of uh, 2022, and uh, we were able to move forward with this. Um, seated right in front of me is Mark Amadeo. He is our energy management specialist um, who is throughout the buildings at nighttime, weekends, um, during the daytime. Uh, you know, every now and then you see a little flashlight on top of the roof running around, that's him. <laughs> um, we just a little quick history. Um, this is our, our second time around. Um, it was formerly known as Energy Ed. Um, a lot of school systems in the state of Maryland went through it, and I was actually the uh, energy manager many, many years ago um, in Queen Anne's County, and we, we had success with that. Um, the same company, just a different name. Um, and one of the things that we realized through the years is that we you know, I've taken on different jobs and no longer can oversee all of that. Um, it's good to have Mark along to analyze the bills um, along with the staff um, that uh, comes along with that. We have uh, individuals that are um, experts in boilers, HVAC, chillers, um, that help bring that to our staff. So uh, without stealing their show, I just want to give a little brief uh, introduction. Thanks, Scott and Mark. Thank you for that. Yeah, so... Um so it, 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 the, probably one of the most important part of the program is having um, the full-time energy specialists um, inside the district acting on your behalf and doing all the building audits that um, is needed to find and all the attention that it needs to, to find all the uh, opportunities out there to save energy. Like our, our, um, our purpose here is to reduce your energy use so that you can set, use the savings uh, for what matters most in, inside this district. So I'll, um, I'll just, we're in the early stages of implementation. Um, we started in January and we have, uh, you know, we've been collecting all the utility data. We've been putting it through our software, doing our analysis, um, trying to find opportunities inside that data, and then using our team, um, some behind me, um, to, you know, implement uh, opportunities and uh, implement processes for change. So um, I'll start with um, the utility rate trend. So as, as we all know, our utility rates, they very rarely go down, although Sid's done a great job here on propane. It looks like uh, we have a, a, a reduction there. Um, so you're, you're done well with your propane and your heating oil um, rates, but um, th these numbers include all the fees, rentals, you know, everything that's associated with the uh, use of the energy. Um, so you can see here, uh, electricity is probably one of our what we are concerned with the most, um, as you'll see in the next slide, it's, it's the biggest um, you know, cost for, for this district is in the electric. So any percentage increase here is gonna be, it's gonna impact the district and that's what we are here to do. I mean, we can't really control costs, um, but we can control the use. We can do what we can to, to, to curtail the use here. Um, water, is an interesting one. We, we do monitor water. Um, we don't typically save a lot of money on water, but it, um, what we can do is be an early detection system for problems with water. So increases in um, sewer fees, 
Um, if one of your towns decides to increase fees or, or um, um, the bills are coming incorrectly, anything like that, that's what, that's what we bring to your attention um, as quickly as we can. So this is your energy cost profile um, for the last fiscal year from July 22 to June 23. So this is all the costs of the utilities that we have in our database uh, collected from you. And as you can see, um, over 20, uh, over 65 percent of Queen Anne's utility spend was on electricity. So that's going to be or and is our um, primary focus. Um, the biggest piece of that slice of the pie is in your HVAC, heating, cooling, ventilation. So that's why um, we do focus on that um, primarily. That's why we bring in the boiler experts and, and our tech lead, Jose, behind me. And we, we try to look for opportunities where we could save there, whether it's in your control system, um, findings from audits. So you know, our goal is to make sure when your buildings aren't being used that they are set back. And we, we strive on teaching your staff on how to set back buildings, um, you know, every weekend, every night, every uh, extended holiday, and especially during the summer. So this is, uh, this is a little summary. Um, I, we do like to do these updates um, at least annually. Um, this is early results right now. We only have data through August, so we don't have the full year yet. But right now we're um, got at $157,000 saved uh, at about 10% reduction in, uh, in your total costs. And the, the environmental impact of that has been 633 uh, metric tons of CO2 um, avoided. So some of you might be wondering what, 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 what on earth does that mean or what does that look like? So that's, that's a, it takes uh, 10,474 trees over 10 years to offset that amount of uh, CO2. And it's also equivalent to um, driving, you know, over 1.5 million miles in an average car. And it's also the, the same energy um, that would power 76 uh, average homes for a year. So we're making a dent um, and we're, we're seeing the uh, trend going in the right direction. So it's very promising. Uh, another piece of this is benchmarking. So this is uh, what they call it energy use index or intensity. This is basically all the energy use um, divided by your building square footage. And you come up with this number, EUI number. And it's a benchmarking number that the EPA uses to compare schools with other schools. So it's also used for the Energy Star um, program. So schools that are in the top 25% uh, nationwide, they'll measure high schools against high schools. And if you're in that top 25%, then you, uh, we can apply for Energy Star. Um, right now, we actually have eight buildings um, that were working on Energy Star uh, right now that were, they actually qualified. We've done the engineering walkthrough on, on your behalf and um, we're hoping to get at least eight buildings here certified this year already. Um, your base year, uh, which is the year prior to the contract start. So as you can see, you're already beating the, the uh, regional average. So the regional average is 54. You guys were already at 52, and so far we've got that down to 49. Um, our goal is to obviously get uh, all the buildings down to that Energy Star um, level. All right, so and, uh, basically we, what we do to come up with this number is 1,000 uh, BTUs. So we convert all the KWH, all the therms, all the gallons of oil that you use. We bring it down into one single unit. Um, for the for the year for the building and divide that by the square footage. So it's basically, you know, 54 UI means 54,000 BTUs per square foot for the year. And that's a, that's a, a very standard uh, benchmark for energy uh, globally. All right, so it's used by everyone and including us. So energy use reduction, I uh, just wanted to show you a couple of these slides. So in the, uh, it might be hard to read, but in the green line, that's your base year um, use. This is all in use. So this is what we're comparing ourselves to every year. All right, so what we're trying to do, our goal is to beat this green line every year. And typically we see 
um, those get lower and lower throughout you know every year of the program. So all the work that we're doing now is going to be, um, you know, that'll be maintained in the in the following year and then built on every year after that. So right now uh, we, we're looking at about a six percent reduction in on the electric uh, propane delivery uh, reduction. So when we first when we first started the program, we were in the middle of winter, so we immediately tried to optimize boilers and heating. That was our main goal. We brought in our boiler expert, Gary Rogers, worked with your staff to just try and curtail, this is before even Mark was hired, um, to curtail as much uh, propane and heating oil and try and get those deliveries uh, reduced. So um, that seems to have worked um, for propane and heating oil. Heating oil you can see here. Um, I know this isn't the full year of heating oil, so there may be some tanks sitting there half full still. So we would anticipate um, delivery starting to come in in the next few months here as it comes back up. But we, we really, uh, we, it looks promising that we can keep that under the, uh, the, the baseline load there. And then water, uh, that's a quarterly bill. That's why you'll see it fluctuate between high use and no use. Um, so you get four quarterly bills. Um, again, water typically is pretty close to, to how we are in the base. All right, this uh, here is our savings trend. Um, so as you can see, the, the first four months of the program, uh, we were focusing on the propane and heating oil. Again, that, that's about 20% of your total costs for the district. And then when Mark um, was hired here in uh, April, then we turned our focus over to the electric and we see a positive trend on, uh, on the electric savings there. And we, we anticipate that to continue to grow. And it looks like we have a lot of opportunity in uh, November, December, January, the winter months uh, on your electric side as well. Um, that wasn't really a focus for us at the beginning, but um, it will be certainly this year. Uh, so we, we anticipate that the savings will be uh, um, very good by the end of the first year. And hopefully we can come in and present, uh, present what that looks like at that time. All right, so does anyone have any questions about the program or what we've been doing here? I have a question. Just yeah. if so, if we apply for the Energy Star, does it get us anything? I mean, can we apply for grants, or does it? How does it benefit besides be the recognition? It, yeah, it's basically a recognition for your building. You, um, you you typically get a plaque from the EPA Energy Star, and you, they also give you an Energy Star sticker. It's very similar to when you buy it on, uh, appliances. They have the Energy Star sticker. So this program was designed to be just like that, except for buildings. And then you can put that uh, Energy Star certification sticker on the, the on the building if you so wish. That's great that so you wish. buildings already on track for that. Now mm -hmm. I have a question yeah. about the propane and the heating oil that we yes. purchased. So are you guys involved in contracting that out? Like how do we get the best, We're, and then we know they're getting the best deal for our... Yeah, we, we don't, um, we, we're not involved with costs. I mean, we'll certainly alert um, the team if, there, if we do see a huge increase in costs. But what we focus on is how, like down in the equipment, like the equipment that's using that propane, how can we get that to use less of it? Okay. Ms. Bennett, we, <clears throat> we shop the market and wait until the um, kind of the indicators say, hey, now's the time to pull the trigger on this and, um, pre-buy our propane and, and our heating oil to keep the cost down on that. Um, it has gone down this upcoming year that we locked in um, for transport, bobtail, and then also for uh, the heating oil portion. But it's we watch the market all the time just to make sure that we're not buying it at a peak. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. When we talk about, you know, your benchmark, Yes. The temperature of the winter can have a big effect. What's your explanation going to be, or how are you going to keep this apples and apples when right. one winter is three degrees average colder than the previous winter? Do you factor that in to give us an actual answer, not just say, well, the reason you're up this way because it's a little colder, but you know, where are we actually as a base? Do you have a way to yeah. measure that in considering the temperature fluctuation sometimes? Yeah, so uh, what we do look at heating degree days and cooling degree days, and what we do is if we see a variation of um, two standard deviations beyond the base low, uh, line, 
Uh, we will make an adjustment in that. Um, we'll make an adjustment to the base so that it'll either lower or increase the base load. Actual. Right, yes. And then we'll measure ourselves against that new number. Um, same with in the future, if you happen to have a colder uh, winter and you do use more energy or it just, well, even better example, if it's a mild, we're not going to go ahead and claim that we saved you that money because it was a mild winter. We, we will actually um, adjust for that. I mean, if January is, let's say, average 30 degrees and that's the base, that's fine. When it goes right. to 35 or 28, then that would change your, you know, I mean, you had no control over that. Yeah, we yeah exactly. We don't have control over it, and our goal is to not take credit or take yeah, we losses. We call Al Gore and have him fix that. Right? Yeah, yeah. The but we is- we use three years of data um, for the base, so we have the base year, which is the year prior to the contract, and then the previous two years, and we do an analysis at the very beginning when we establish the baseline um, to make sure that it's you know it's reasonable with the weather for the for the last three years. And this is your first year here. Yes. Well, under the new name, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. The law of diminishing return, I, mean, I would think the first year you'll see more savings, or do you anticipate the same savings each year? Because you know, once you make certain adjustments, how, how can you squeeze out orange to get more juice out of it? I mean, I just, you know, the first one you probably you hit yeah. the, the low fruit, exactly. but then the higher fruit gets higher. It gets, yes. Is yep. that, is that you still optimistic that we can keep this usage down? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so you're right. We do, we do um, typically see um, the trend go up pretty steeply in the first year. Um, probably starts plateauing at the end of the second year, um, and then after that, we, uh, you know, we start looking deeper and deeper into into the more technical um, opportunities. Right. So, like you said, we're right now we're doing like, like just your standard uh, guideline stuff. Ch- uh, changing set points, making sure they're um, set up properly, your schedules, making sure your buildings are set and back every night, every weekend. Um, and then, you know, w- once we have that base established, you're right, it does start to slow down, but we, we continue to look for those opportunities throughout the life of the program. And we do typically see the trend in savings trend increase over the whole five, five uh, years of the program, yep. Just to kind of go along with that, so you've done 387 energy audits so far, is that right, Mark? As um, a team, we have, yeah. So yep. do you just continue doing the same audits or do you start doing a, a second level, digging in deeper when we start going into the other years trying to do more fine tuning? Yeah, so right now we, we call it phase one and phase two. So we do have these low hanging fruit. So these are the audits that Mark will be continuously looking at, coming in into the building, after hours, making sure that he doesn't hear any of the HVAC running, um, just trying to get all that initial stuff set up first, and then once once um, you know the, once he starts going into these buildings and notices, okay, that they're 100 percent compliant every single time. That's when we start looking at the more uh, detailed stuff, like what can we do to the equipment to run it better during the occupied time. All right, so you know, can we make it ventilate better? Can we increase the flow um, from the boiler? Do we need to adjust the central plants to, you know, deliver more heat or less heat out into the building itself? And you know, those kind of uh, more f- finer details uh, come in later in the program for sure. Yep. Thank you. I have a question. Your data sets include this building as well, correct? It does. We, yes, we... Want everybody to <laughs> Hopefully we're going to think it in a couple so, of years. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I think it's an important factor yeah. to, to, to speak of because I, I feel like when we vacate this building that it will definitely um, positively impact the overall data. So is there a yes. way to um, run that data piece without this building in there so we can really just focus on the schools? Yes, we okay. can. Um, so we, we track everything, um, whether it's in, as a part of the energy program or not. Um, and then we, we can separate out individual buildings. We, we have the detail all the way down to the individual meters. So um, any way that you want to slice and dice the data, we can absolutely do that. If you want to just look at elementary schools, you can. If you just want to look at the, the towns age individually, by age, you know, by age, age comparison, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, you yeah, could, we you can compare them. Centerville Middle School to Sunders Hill. Sunders Hill is a new school, Centerville is an older middle school. Right. You could compare those two and show us the difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can. Yep. But if we're keeping this building as CTE, mm-hmm. it would still be included as one of our school buildings. 
it would be yes, extra square footage. But I think at that point to. it would be renovated and it would be more efficient. Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah. And this building, um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a, a benchmarking precedence with Energy Star. So they're, they're typically only, um, we're only going to be able to do a national benchmark against elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. Um, even early child center, uh, childhood centers aren't, aren't benchmarkable for Energy Star. Right. But we, we still do our benchmarking here ourselves. Yep. Thank you. I, I think Ms. Bennett had one question about, you know, um, do you plateau? Part of Mark's job really was falling on Mr. O'Donnell and myself of making sure that, you know, we have setback schedules at, say, you know, Center of Elementary School, 430. All right, teachers rather, but there is always a program going on somewhere in that in mm -hmm. Queen's County High School. So, you know, at the auditorium is the auditorium the, the choir is practicing until you know eight o'clock tonight. Is the heat on in there? You know, is the basketball this and that and all? It's almost a full time job of monitoring. Is that on? Is it off? You know, was it removed out of the system? Was it just on for that one night? Um, and sometimes people get we get complacent and. Um, you know, their roof, he found three rooftop units, even though it says it's off at Queens County High School, they're running, you know, nonstop. Um, so it, it is juggling that. And then I always joke around with Mark about, hey, um, you know, we're in the shoulder months here of he's narrowing down that time schedule of when the units are running so that complaints go to him <laughs> from the teachers. But it, it, it is a constant waking up in the morning or the night before or the week before and watching that trend of what the, the temperatures are going to be to make sure that we don't go too far and that we're kind of, you know, walking on that fine line because you're not going to see as much savings during your shoulder months as you would during, like, your heating or cooling times, but you still can capture some of that time and, uh, you know, and that money there. So it, it is constant monitoring it. And part of even what Sid said there, too, is you're not only monitoring those systems, looking at just to, to see if that obviously we want to monitor the comfortability when we're adjusting schedules but um, also back here is, is our technical lead Jose we'll look into those systems to make sure are these systems functioning properly on the building management system itself so like what Sid said we found rooftop units that weren't answering to schedules that were set up our goal is to go in there and find them make sure and I'll, I'll be on the roof verifying I'm in the classrooms verifying listening is it actually cooling what is going on with these units specifically we have jose and a team of engineers too that go in and help identify and provide information to the school district hey this is where we think this problem is headed this is where we think that jci is going to need to come in or whoever the contractor might be to fix these sort of things so that we can get these issues resolved quicker and there's less likelihood of losing any more additional money from having these these systems running constantly or and again this happens to large school districts everywhere where you might have a unit somewhere that just stays on or it doesn't function or listen to the system the right way as it should be so that's part of a little snapshot but uh, an extension of what Sid had just mentioned there yeah, thank you so much all right no more questions no. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank, we you. Appreciate Thank it. you for your time, and uh, thanks again for all your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. It's been yep. great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, spotlight presentation. Dr. Sprangle. Good afternoon, everyone. President Schiffinelli, Good afternoon, Salem, board members, executive <coughs> team members. For the record, I am Dr. Marcia Sprinkle, the assistant superintendent, and it gives me a great pleasure to present our October spotlight for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. First up, we have Bayside Elementary School. This year, Bayside Elementary School was selected to participate in the Terrapin Education and Research Partnership Program. This is facilitated by Maryland's Environmental Services. Bayside students were excited to welcome the Terrapin, which is located in the Media Center. So if you get a chance to visit Bayside Elementary School, make sure you stop by to see the Terrapin. <laughs> 
This is the first year that Bayside Elementary School has participated in the program, and they're thrilled to pieces. Excuse me, does the turtle have a name? I don't know that. Okay. I don't Do you have, that. we have one, um, trying to think of where I was the other day, but they have one and his name is Tiny Tim. <laughs> Canard, yes. Canard has Canard. tiny Tim. Tiny I think Tim. sometimes the names change too. They do change. They change. <laughs> gotcha. Depending on the day, right? All right. Yes. Okay. But they're all super cool. Right. Next up, we have Centerville Elementary School. Centerville Elementary School started the year by having lessons that help to foster relationships with families, students, and the school community. Last month, Centerville Elementary School held us back to school night. The staff greeted students and families with smiling faces and excitement. Families toured the school, learned classroom expectations, and spoke to school partners such as the PTA. We all love our PTAs, for sure. Families and students enjoyed some Kona ice to celebrate the first month of school. As a part of the new reading program, second grade students read selected text and compiled a list of characteristics of a good citizen. So at Centerville Elementary School, we have super citizens. Mm -hmm. So the next time you're by, check out that super citizenship. Next up, we have Graysonville Elementary School. The staff and leadership team at Graysonville Elementary are completing a book study this year. I think they're following in suit with Dr. Salins with the leadership mm -hmm. books that we are reading as well. The leadership team is reading Lead Like a Pirate and the staff is reading Teach Like a Pirate. The leadership team kicked off the event by dressing like pirates. Boy, I know they had some excitement going on at Graysonville Elementary School. There you can see them pictured in their back to school assembly sharing their expectations for the year. Next up, Kennard Elementary School. Fifth grade students enjoyed a field trip to, out to the Avalon Theater in Neaston, where they viewed a documentary film and had an informative discussion led by a historian, Tony Cohen. The Students of the Month Assembly was held for students nominated for being responsible, the character counts pillar for the month of September. International Dot Day was a big hit at Kennard Elementary School. If you had a chance to stop by, you can see in that picture there, they have dots across the back wall of the media center. It was an exciting day at Kennard Elementary School during Dot Day last month. Next up, we have Kent Island Elementary School. To support the Kent Island Elementary School goes purple. Students colored purple crayons and made a pack to be to make good choices throughout the year. Miss Angela Giebert, picture there, is one of our early learning supervisors, jumps in to help the pre-K staff unpack materials, furniture to prepare for the back to school night. Pre-K students contemplated their prospective careers doing imaginary play there. They had lots and lots of fun. And of course, the biggest excitement for the school was the outdoor classrooms, the ribbon cutting. You can see the students pictured there cutting the ribbon. Also, school resource officer Chad Schroyer makes friends while on the job. Settlersville Elementary School. Settlersville Elementary celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month on September 15th. The event was planned by parents, the PTA, and the QACPS <coughs> migrant recruiter. Students participated in bingo and had an opportunity to share about their culture. Staff enjoyed special Hispanic cuisines provided by our families at Sutlersville Elementary School. Stevensville Middle School the Positive Behavior Intervention and Support Program is off to a great start at Stevensville Middle School. Students bought tickets to attend planting and popsicles and entered a raffle to play a quick game of dodgeball. 
actually witnessed that today when I was at Stevensville Middle School, having lots of fun outside. Students dissected for owl pellets, excuse me, in seventh grade science. They categorized and analyzed the bones found to determine what the owls had eaten. Oh boy, lots of <laughs> excitement. Yeah. Students in eighth grade science measured volume with precision. Reaching for the stars, students in the enrichment, extension and intervention class conquered the astronaut challenge as they explored the wonders of space. Kudos to Stevensville Middle School students. Next up, we have our RISE Academy. It's up and running extremely well. Two Kent Island high school graduates and, and current high, Kent Island high school juniors spent countless hours creating that beautiful mural in the background with special quotes. Also, they have a food pantry I guess you would call it also not only food, but clothes. They have refrigerated item, food items as well for any students or families needing those supplies for sure. So kudos to our RISE staff. Also, they had an opportunity to share a meal. They did a little tailgate, the staff and the students. So they had lots and lots of fun. And that is it for our October Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dr. Smith. Dr. Kibler, policy calendar update. President Schiffnelli, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. Uh, what I'm bringing to you tonight is just a schedule for the year of um, a policy calendar. A little bit of background, you might remember it's been about 18 months that uh, you all voted uh, to uh, approve edits to the policy on policies. Um, what we've been doing, or I've been doing, is meeting with groups that oversee each policy area. So you've got HR, finance, um, CNI, things like that. And what we're trying to do is get our policies and regulations, well over 100, on a cycle, a four-year cycle, where they will be coming up for review every year just to be in line with, with what our policy on policy says. So when I meet with these groups, I ask them, what we're trying to do is for everything in their area get to basically break up their policies into equal chunks over four years. We're in the second of this four year uh, calendar to get this up. Obviously, if we have something that comes from the state or, or something that somebody in the community brings up, you know, something might get out of line there, which is it's all fine or we have a new policy, but just trying to get these all um, on a schedule that, that we can adhere to and continue to monitor. So when I meet with the groups, they're asked to, um, for the policies for the year, do they just need to be reaffirmed? So we're just saying, hey, this is all good. We just need to say that we looked at it and we'll review it again in four years. Do they need reformatted and reaffirmed? Um, if you've looked at some of our policies, some of them date way back to like 1993, the early 2000s, things like that. So maybe they're fine and they just need to be put on our new format so that that's what I call reformat and reaffirm. Do they need a full edit so there are changes or can they be rescinded? Can they just go away altogether? And then, so the plan is that we will start bringing policies for this year to you all uh, next month in November. And this is, it's a little easier probably to see your own, on your own laptop, but this is the calendar that we put together for this year. Um, I don't pretend sure. to be an expert in each of these policies, just trying to help organize everybody around the district um, to get us on a schedule. If there are any questions or comments. Questions, comments, nothing? This is extremely, Matt, ex extremely exciting stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Must be doing a good job. Cool. Yes. Thank you. 
thing. Yes. The, ones, the ones who like to pay phone in a hall and stuff, they do need to look at some of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we appreciate it yeah. and keep Thank it up. You. And I know we've approved a lot of policies that have been revised over the, the months um, and last year, of course. Sure, so, it'll be busy. Yep. But yeah. we'll get Thank that you, Dr. Kibler, for your definitely leadership. Need to be, Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot. Definitely it's need to be left, tackled. Sure. Okay. No action items tonight. Future meetings, um, November November 1st, 2023 at 6 p.m. will be our regular uh, open session. And November 15, 2023 at 5 p.m. will be the November, November work session. And what are the we'll dates again? I'm sorry, President Schiffel. Can you give me those dates again? November 1st, 2023 at 6 p.m. And November 15th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Okay. Um, the work session is in November. I mean, we can always, that's scheduled right now, but that could at the next meeting be changed if we find out we don't need it Absolutely. with the holidays and stuff like yeah, that. I I think, see why not. Yeah, I think I think the I mean, November and the December one for our team, I think we can fit everything, squeeze everything in on the regular meetings. And just FYI to the board that, um, especially in, we know January, February, we get heavy into budget season, so we're here nearly every Wednesday. Right, so if we do right. have something that needs to come, we can sneak it in on one of those agendas. But my recommendation would be right now, um, you know, I think we can tentatively kind of think about canceling um, the November 15th and then the de December one. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. I do remember. Oh, there's not one planned for December. Okay. No. <laughs> Just okay. Be November. It's only the November one. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, if nothing arises between now and November 1st, we'll consider Vote that. on it on the sure. 1st. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's got to be voted on. No. no. no I don't, okay. okay. That's fine. To talk about it, discuss it. We, just have right. it. we will make okay. it up in January and February, I guarantee you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Mrs. Dennis. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, Sorry. Anything else? Yep. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Do I hear one? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 And good night. <laughs>